Hey guys, Amy with you, and a lot of you got really annoyed with me a few weeks ago when I did a video on a wooden heat shield that China launched and glossed over reentry by just saying that the heat comes from friction with the atmosphere. Well, I know that's not exactly what's happening, I just wanted to get to the heat shield bit. So to make up for you guys being annoyed with me, today on Vintage Space we are going to be looking in more detail at what really happens during atmospheric reentry. Okay, let's start with the obvious that people usually forget. Even though we don't really feel air hitting our skin all the time, unless there's wind, that's a different feeling, air is actually made up of molecules, and anything passing through the air has to move those molecules out of the way to get through. Now, this doesn't really impact us as we walk down the street, but it does start to impact an airplane when it flies. The air molecules will behave differently depending on how fast and how high an airplane is flying, and it all depends on the ratio of the speed of that aircraft to the speed of sound through the air at that altitude. It's a value expressed as a Mach number, and really it only starts to become an issue when you get around Mach 1. Flying faster than the speed of sound is colloquially called breaking the sound barrier, although there's no physical barrier in the sky. What's really happening is that the air molecules are bunching up in front of the airplane and can't move out of the way fast enough until the airplane breaks through that wall, what you can think of as a wall. And once it does that, that's the sonic boom that you hear. So really, the issue with flying, or in the case of reentry, falling at very fast speeds through the atmosphere, and what the molecules are doing to that body that's flying or falling, comes down to how the air molecules molecules behave at really high speeds, or rather, when the object is going at a very high speed. Typical commercial jets are flying below the speed of sound. The only passenger jet to ever fly faster than sound was the Concorde, and it could only do that over water because it's really hard to, you know, have a sonic boom going over the width of a country as a plane flies. A spacecraft re-entering from low Earth orbit, like the Space Shuttle, was re-entering a lot faster than Mach 1. It was falling somewhere around the area of Mach 25, or five times the speed of sound. Re-entry speeds that fast affect the air molecules the spacecraft is falling through, and the temperature becomes so great that it actually breaks apart the chemical bonds of the air molecules. The result is an electrically charged plasma surrounding the spacecraft, and that's what gets really hot. The heat of re-entry is so great that spacecraft need special thermal barriers to protect them during re-entry. On the space shuttle, special silicone tiles placed on the aluminum skin helped insulate it, while on the leading edge there was a carbon-carbon composite. But the shuttle's re-entry was a little bit different. It was a glider, so it was able to make S-turns to slow down and to help dissipate some of the heat, and because of that it used a very different thermal protection system. The ballistic capsules we've seen from other programs and other countries, think the Mercury, Gemini, Apollo, Shenzhou, and Soyuz, have all used ablative heat shields. Ablative heat shields are made of a special ceramic material that's designed to slowly burn away as a spacecraft encounters the high temperature plasma flow in front of the bow shock associated with reentry. So does that help explain what's really going on during atmospheric reentry? There is a lot to it, and everyone just kind of simplifies it by saying the heat of reentry demands a heat shield. So no, I wasn't trying to not explain it to you guys, I was really just trying to focus on the wooden heat shield and that weird bit of history. So hopefully these two videos now together will help answer some more of your questions about what happens when spacecraft return from space using some less traditional materials. And by the way, if you want to check out that video about the wooden heat shield, it's going to pop up from one of these corners over here right now. So let me know if you still have questions about what happens when spacecraft re-enter the atmosphere, or when they leave the atmosphere, or when they visit other atmospheres on other planets, or the exosphere of the moon. Any of your space questions and comments, leave those in the comment section below. Be sure to follow me on Twitter and on Instagram for daily vintage space content, and with new videos going up right here every single week, subscribe so you never miss an episode.